Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Happy Cells and Souls. My name is Julie Powers and I am a licensed Zumba instructor and a partner with the Juice Plus Company. And I believe that life is better when you're dancing through it. And I love to inspire healthy living around the world. But my expanded mission is to create better health at the cellular level and more joy at the cellular level. Because I believe that we only get one body while we're here on this earth and we're supposed to take care of it but we're also supposed to have happiness and joy in our bodies, in our souls, and we're supposed to share that with the world. And so what I have found is that in my life, I've met some really incredible people along the way, and I believe that we are here to learn from everyone, no matter what our religious beliefs are, political beliefs, what our family backgrounds are, what our economic issues are at the moment, you know, where do we fall on the spectrum? It doesn't matter we can learn from every single person in front of us. And if we're not learning and growing, we're stagnant and dying and that's no fun. And so today, I am really excited to have this conversation with my friend, Rihanna Sanford. And Rihanna is a wife and a mother and Alessandro is her husband and her kids are, let me make sure I get this right because I wrote down the ages. Kaya is 16, Jaden is 14 and Alex is 13. So she has her hands full. Um, Rihanna and I met through the Juice Plus company, and so we are one team, one mission, out there in the world, inspiring healthy living, and Rihanna just is an incredibly special person because we were part of a personal growth and leadership program where we got to know each other really well, and she and I share the fact that we're mothers of special needs children, and we both have daughters. Mine just happens to be in heaven at this point. And uh, she, she left the earth in 2007 and she's living her best life right now. But Rihanna's daughter, Kaya, is still with you in your home and providing all kinds of amazing happiness and joy. And so I would love for this conversation to be about the fact that sometimes things don't happen the way that we think they're going to that we have this perception of control in our lives that doesn't always happen because we learn along the way that we have no control over anything. And we've talked about the inconvenience of things that might occur and how do we react to those. And I think you are a superstar when it comes to that. And you've even <laughs> written books that are out there for people to get. And the book that I think uh, sounds really great is one called This Special Life living with special needs and loving it. And um, so if you could just sort of walk us through the life of Rihanna Sanford and how you got oh. where you are today. Gee, gosh, Julie, thank you. Um, what a privilege it is to get to sit here this afternoon on a Friday and just get to chat with you a little bit about things that we both um, are very familiar with, you know, and, um, and hopefully be able to give some light and some life to whoever might be watching um, this video later. So yeah, as you mentioned, I am a mom. I am a wife, a mom of three kids. I had three kids in three years. And so it, things were way more hectic for me then. I always like to tell people I earned my Wonder Woman badge uh, those early years because I had three, I had three kids in diapers at one time. So, oh my gosh, um, I just yes. I can't even. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was life was real. Life was real um, then. And now that they're teenagers, I would tell you things are a lot easier, a lot more simple than what things were like then. Not, not nearly as hectic and kind of cry cry. But, um, you know, today, today life is full of what I like to call um, hindsight. 2020, you know, vision, um, because early on in life, things were, um, like I said, hectic and, and a little bit difficult um, with my daughter and, and finding out that, um, you know, she may never walk and she may never talk. Um, being diagnosed with a incurable disease called Rett syndrome, um, you know, you, we talk about those inconveniences and it was a curveball. Um, no one ever dreams about you know, being a parent that's pushing a wheelchair, like that's just not something that we 
when we're girls, little girls, you know, that we think about, or even like with you, Julie, that you're going to be in and out of the hospital all the time dealing with things and dealing with machines suctioning and, you know, all kinds of things that we just never imagined. Um, and uh, some other things that I'm doing today that I never imagined I'd do are homeschooling two boys. Um, we homeschool the, the two boys and just really felt strongly that that was what was best for them. And that we we're in our seventh year, just wrapping up our seventh year actually um, of homeschooling. And um, it's been great for them. So that's part of what my day looks like. And then um, during this great mission that Julie, you and I get to do with inspiring healthy living around the world and helping people become the best versions of themselves. Um, so that's, that's the other great big thing that I love that I get to do. But God really has put on my heart um, a burden for other mamas like us who were walking through this um, journey of living life with special needs. And that's really kind of how the book came along. I really had no desire to write another book to be honest with you. This is my second book that I wrote. Um, but I knew that there were some keys that I had kind of stumbled upon, um, some keys and truths, what I believe to be truths, um, about being able to, to embrace this life that I have, um, you know, living a life with a child with severe special needs, um, and not just embrace it, but excel in it and just um, be able to live with a, with a smile on my face and, and hopefully continue to inspire, you know, other people um, to live their best life, no matter what circumstances they might be facing. Um, because like you said, Julie, um, you know, the reality is we're not always in, in as in con much control as we would hope that we would, would be in. And, um, you know, the, there are so many things that we've learned as a result of, you know, realizing that we're not in control, you know, right. and things kind of coming, you know, at us in a curveball um, type of speed that we just, you know, we had to kind of be ready to catch and then bring it in, you know, and I think that's where um, a lot of people struggle. They might catch it and then it's just kind of like, what do, but what do I do? You know, what do I do with this? And how are we supposed to live like this, you know? And um, so really, I hope that whatever I'm able to bring to the world is, is um, you know, hopefully some answers, you know, of how you can embrace and bring it in, you know, just bring it in. There's, no, there's nothing that's a shock to your creator. And, and so, you know, you already have within you what you need to be able to live this life and live this life well. So those are some of the keys that I put into that book. Um, hopefully for not just mamas, uh, you know, of, with children that have special needs, but really we all, right? All of us, it doesn't matter who you are. We all have curveballs that are thrown at us. We all have things that, that come in life that we are just not expecting. It makes us very uncomfortable. We're like, what, you know, it leaves us speechless almost. Um, and nonetheless, there are these truths, there are these keys that, you know, putting them in place has, has been what, what's been so instrumental for me, you know, to really being able to embrace life and live my best life regardless of the circumstances. Right. Well, now I think that's great because you're saying instead of just embracing, you're excelling. It's like when people say, I'm not just going to survive this, I'm going to thrive. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. you know, I always say that I, I'm dancing through life and I feel like every single person has a dance of some kind and it may not look like a waltz or a cha-cha or a merengue or a salsa or whatever. It may look like, um, you know, just being within their family, um, you know, finding music other ways. I know you're a musician, you're a singer mm -hmm. and you, you um, provide music for your church and uh, you have a beautiful voice. Oh, thank you. Uh, and so, you know, I think that everybody has their thing, whatever that is, that fills them with joy. And sometimes have people have multiple things, of course. Um, but I think finding that little piece too is important because when, when you're in the middle of a crisis, like when your daughter was first born and 
you knew there was a problem. You know, when you were first in that moment where the doctors and the nurses identified, you're going to have a situation on your hands that does not look anything like what you dreamed this moment would look like. Um, I, I know that for me, I say that I, I grieved my daughter's death twice because we lost original Emma when, mm -hmm. when she stopped breathing. And all of a sudden, this little girl that was going to grow up and, and be in all these really fun things in high school and go to prom mm -hmm. and have a boyfriend and get married mm -hmm. and have kids, mm -hmm. that little girl was gone. And so you probably had that same grief where you yeah. lost Kaya. You lost yeah. that Kaya that you had dreams about. Right. And then, mm -hmm. um, but then I lost Emma a second time when her earthly body was finished. Right. Um, and so those are curveballs for sure. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't say that I was dealing with it in the best possible way at that time, because I think that when we're in the middle of crisis, we do what we have to do to get mm -hmm. from one day to the next and from one minute mm -hmm. to the next. But we definitely learn along the way. And you've had 16 years to develop this, you know, the, the keys and mm -hmm. the concepts. And you've really gotten good at it, which is so great that you're able to share that with people so that these other parents that find themselves in the same situation know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and so, um, mm -hmm. you know, so if you could talk about the light at the end of your tunnel and what does that look like for you yeah so you know in the last chapter of um this book that love living um this special life living with special needs and loving it um there's a chapter there's a chapter called loving the special life loving the special life and um I kind of, there's an analogy there that I um, use and everybody who drives will know this analogy. So, <laughs> so it, you know how when you're in, in a highway, like you're stuck on a tra traffic jam or something like that, right? And you're looking, you know, you're kind of stuck where you are and you're looking to your left and you're looking to your right. You're saying this guy, this line is moving ahead, right? And this lane is moving ahead. And you're like, well, dang, I, I want to move too, you know? So, so you get out of the lane, your lane, and you go into the lane that you think or you perceive is the better lane, okay? And so, so, but the idea is what happens? You get in that other lane, and then boom, you stop too. And then the other lane that you were in is moving along swimmingly now, right? So, so the idea of that, and the reason why I use that analogy is, you have your own life to live. I have my own life to live. Julie, you have your own life to live. We all have our own lane to, to excel in, right? To be able to accelerate in. And just because you're stopped where you are and you're dealing with the things that you're dealing with, you have the challenges that you have in your life that you're dealing with, it's temporary, first of all, okay? It's temporary. Second of all, it's fine. Everybody is gonna have their challenges. Okay, so keep stay in your lane. We hear that it's such a cliche, but oh my goodness, it's power. Stay in your lane, go through the things that you're going through and come out better on the other side, okay? Come out better on the other side. And so that's one of the ways that I really just, you know, kind of help people. These things that you're dealing with, if you're intentional about the challenges that you face, if you're determined to, to learn through those things, if you're determined to possibly even be a blessing to someone else while you're going through those things, you are going to feel so much better at the end of the day than you would if you just sat there and just and was, made yourself crazy by looking at what everybody else's life looks like, right. okay? looking at this lane, looking at this lane. And so that's part of what the kind of the key that I give to people when it comes to light at the end of the tunnel, because, and it's, it takes baby steps. I realize that, you know, like you said, Julie, that first moment when, when you realize something is not quote unquote normal, you know, um, and, and that death, that first death comes along like, oh, you know, um, 
this isn't, this is not, you know, the, it the life like that the I, thing I had in mind. Yeah. Like this, yeah, this is not the life I signed up for. <laughs> right. Right. And you know, and you have those dreams of dance class and you have those dreams of our first prom and you have those, you know, and it's, and it can be very heartbreaking. And I'm not saying that everything is going to go, everything is going to, you're going to feel great about everything. Um, but, but you have a decision. You, everybody, we all have decisions to make when challenges, when trials, when things come our way, we have a decision to make to either learn from it, learn the most that we can from it and grow from it. Or, and, and I like to say give from it as well. You know, a lot of people don't think they just think, woe is me. They don't think how their story can be a blessing to someone else. Right, and right. so if you can learn from it, grow from it, give from it, um, that is going to ultimately help you to be able to feel fulfilled, you know, and grateful. Gratitude is huge when you're in the thick of a mess, because then you realize when you're out of the mess, you're able to look at the top of the mountain, you're able to look at what you came through, and then be able to hopefully give someone else hope, you know, like I've been there. I've right. been down there in the valley, and it was tough. But you know what? I looked up and I saw and I knew that this is temporary. This was just something that was tough right now. But I knew God was going to give us the grace to go through it and move through it. And here we are on this mountaintop. And it doesn't necessarily mean my daughter is still in a wheelchair. My daughter still can't say a word to me. And those are but things. She, that laughs. she laughs like nobody laughed her. Laughs. Amazing. Oh my word, that, <laughs> that joy that exudes from that girl, I almost, I don't know that I would rather hear her speak to me over the laughter that comes from her. It is that powerful, it is that magical, and I know without a shadow of a doubt that that girl's purpose has to do with being able to bless other people with this radiant joy, right. and she doesn't have to speak a word to do it. Right. You know, those, those are things that I'm grateful for. And if you can get your eyes off of the things that you feel like you've been, that's been stolen from you or that you have lack of and get your eyes and decide to dwell on the things that you're grateful for instead, it's amazing how much better your life. And you just begin to kind of start to expect things. You expect better things to happen to you because you're just so focused on the great things that you already have. Right. So you're, you're almost like welcoming from I don't know, whatever you believe, the universe, God, whatever, you're welcoming those good, amazing things to come your way because that's what you're making the decision to focus on. Right. I think that people too, um, people get trapped in this negative cycle of, um, you know, like for me, I turned the news off last summer. I like, I, I haven't watched the news since June of 2019 because I, I, you know, I realized that it was sucking the life out of me. It was pulling mm -hmm. my soul out and just doing no good for me whatsoever. That does not mean that I don't know what's going on in the world. I know what's mm -hmm. going on in the world and I can be in control of the news that I seek out. Mm -hmm. So I'm acknowledging some of the negative things that are going on in the world and that mm -hmm. are affecting people around me and me. I understand mm -hmm. the negativity part of it. I understand the consequences. I know what's happening, but I choose to do the, however, mm -hmm. this is happening. However, if I, if I don't focus on the bad, it's so much easier for me to find the good. And if I continue to focus on hope and joy and light mm -hmm. and love, then other people will feel that. It's and so I think that that's our job. You know, it's, you know, like I said in the introduction is I believe that we are supposed to share happiness and joy and love and light, not get sucked into negativity where we're all just sitting around in a big huddle talking about how awful things are. Right. Cause right. If we just yeah. sit around talking and focusing about those things, it's just going to get worse. But yeah. you are one of the people that continues to focus on those light and love moments and bring that into the world. And because, you know, I think that you just have this light that comes out of you. And part of that is coming out of Kaya as well. Mm -hmm. 
and mm -hmm. I'm sure her brothers, you know, are part of that and your whole family. So, you know, we have like two minutes to finish okay. up the conversation. I know it goes by in a flash. It does so fast. Yeah. <laughs> so what I want to make sure that I mention is that in the text below this video, there will be um, a link to your website, riannasanford.com, and there people can go and find out about the books that you have available and can read more about you and your story. And there will be a way to contact you if they need to have a conversation with you directly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, either one of us is happy to talk about living with children with special needs. Um, your story is very different from mine, just as everyone else's story that has, you know, someone in their family with special needs at this moment. So mm -hmm. what can you tell us in the last minute of our conversation that is something that you want to make sure that people walk away from this knowing? Oh, I guess just understand the uniqueness that you bring to the universe. Um, no one can do what you were created to do like you can do it. You are the best person for the job. And, and I hope that, that gives you hope. I hope that, that that blesses you and that gives you just a sense of accomplishment because there are things that only you can do and you were actually put on this earth just for you to do. No matter what the circumstances may come, just know that you you are unique to you and there's no one else that can do you like you. So that that hopefully will be a great place to end it today. That is perfect. And I just thank you so much for being part of the conversation. And I hope that um, whoever watches this will find much, much joy 